Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at composite functions, which essentially just means combining functions. But we're going to have a look at how we actually approach this. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're going to get started. So it says, given that the function of x is 3x minus 5 and the function of g is 2x plus 4, find the value of gf4. Now gf4 essentially in words just means what does g equal when f is 4. So what is g when f is 4? So the first thing we have to find out is what is f 4 or inserting 4 into f. So that's the first thing I'm going to work out and you just got to be careful the way you read the language there because obviously g comes first but we actually look at f to start with. So think about the language how I've said that. What is g when f is 4? So I'm going to work out f 4 to start with which just means sub 4 into f and if we sub 4 into f we get 3 lots of 4 take away 5. And 3 lots of 4 is 12, take away 5, leaves us with 7. Okay, so when f is 4, we get the answer 7. Now, we've got the answer 7, so we need to work out g. So we're going to put 7 into g and work that out. And that gives us 2 lots of 7, 2x plus 4 g is up here. So 2 lots of 7, add 4, would give us 14 plus 4, which is 18. There you go. So obviously just think about the language there. It was what is g when f is 4? Well, when f is 4, you sub 4 into f, and we get 3 times 4, which is 12, take away 5, which is 7. And then once we've got the 7 and we know what f4 is, we put that into g. So we put sub that into g, which is 2 lots of 7, add the 4. So 14 add 4, give us 18. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, so very similar question. It says, given that f of x equals 2x plus 5 and g of x equals x squared minus 5, find the value of f g 3. So let us run the other way this time. And that means what is f when g is 3 or once g is 3? So the first thing I'm going to have to work out is subbing 3 into g. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to put the answer into f. So what is f when or once g is 3? So sub 3 into g, we get g 3. It's going to equal 3 squared, x squared, this one up here, take away 5. There you go. So 3 squared is 9, take away 5 gives us the answer 4. So 4 is what I can now put into f. So now I can work out f4. And subbing that into f, which is up here, we get 2 lots of 4, which is 8, plus 5. And 8 plus 5 equals 13. Okay, so you've just got to read the FG or the GF in the order and speak it as it says it. So F of G3 means the function of G, uh, the, sorry, the function of F when G is 3. Okay, so let's have a look and some questions for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's two questions. So have a go at these two, pause the video there, we'll give you the answer in a sec. Okay, so this first one on the left, it says find gf4, so what is g when f is 4? So let's work out f4 to start with. So subbing 4 into f, we get 2 lots of 4, plus 6. 2 lots of 4 is 8, plus 6 is 14. There we go. So we get 14 when we put 4 into f. That's the number we're going to put into g. So g14. Not the nicest one here because we have 6 lots of 14. And then we have to take away 7. There we go. Obviously, we have got quite a large number there, bigger than before. So just go back, double check, make sure you're happy with that. That said, what is g when f is 4? We've put 4 into f. 2 lots of 4 is 8, plus 6 is 14. Okay, absolutely fine with that. So 14 is what's going into g. So we need to work this out. 6 times 14, or 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 4 is 24. So that's 84. So 84 take away 7. And 84 take away 7 leaves us with 70. 7. There we go, and 77 is our final answer. On to the next one. It wants us to find gf3. So we're going in, we, we want to know what is g when f is 3. So the same way around again, actually. Um, so you just got to watch out, obviously, if I've done one of each here, but let's have a look. Um, we need to find g when f is 3. So let's put 3 into f. So f3. And that's going to give us 15, it's 5 lots of 3 using this f up here. 5 lots of 3 is 15, let's write it down, take away 9, so 15 take away 9 equals 6, there we go, so it's 6 that we are going to be putting into G, so into G with 6, and that's going to be x squared plus 1, the second one, so we've got 6 squared plus 1, 6 squared is 36, so we have 36 plus 1, 
and our answer there is 37. Okay, so obviously just being careful what it says. Obviously, if that had have said FG3, we'd have done that in a different way. Okay, so if it had have said FG3, we'd have first put 3 into G, and G3 would have given us 3 squared plus 1, 9 plus 1 equals 10, and then we'd have put 10 into F if it was the other way around, so we'd have done F10, and that would have been 5 times 10 is 50, take away 9, 50 take away 9 is 41. So you've got the answer 41 doing it the other way around. Okay, so you've got to be very careful what the language says, the way the, or the, the letters are organised there. Let's have a look at what happens when there's not any numbers in them. Okay, so this question here says, given f of x is x squared plus 4 and g of x is 2x plus 1, write down an expression for fgx. Okay, so we're not putting a number in this time. It says write down an expression for fgx. So that means what is the function of f when you put g into it? Okay, so not any numbers or anything, just what is f when you put somewhere when you sub the function g in? So if I want to sub the function g into f, there's a nice little trick for it. I'm just going to put a bracket around the whole function and I'm going to put it in the place of the x in f. So if I actually do that, let's actually put that in there. If I just put the bracket in, so 2x plus 1, it's x squared, so that bracket is squared plus. Four. Now that is actually an expression there for fgx, that's absolutely fine, fgx, but normally we would go and expand this and tidy it all up. So obviously if I do want to do that now to tidy it all up, uh, we've got a double bracket to expand there, so we have 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1, and at the end of all that we need to add 4 to the end. So expand that as a double bracket, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. That's that one. Then we've got 2x times 1 and 1 times 2x, and that's going to give us a 2x and a 2x, which makes 4x. And the final multiplication there, 1 times 1 gives us 1, and we're going to add 4 at the end. So tidying this all up, getting that nice expression there, we've got 4x squared plus 4x, and then 1 plus 4 gives us plus 5 at the end. So 4x squared plus 4x plus 5. Let's have a look at another one where it's the other way around. So same functions here, but we have a look at gfx. Okay, so we've got gfx this time. Let's see how it's different if we do it like this. So this means what's g when we put f in. So I'm gonna put my bracket around the f function. I'm gonna sub that into g. So we've got two lots of that bracket, two lots of x squared plus four. And then at the end, we've got plus one. So I just need to tidy this all up now. And that's gonna give me my expression for gfx. There we go. So let's just times this bracket out. Two lots of x squared is 2x squared. Two lots of 4 is 8. I'm not forgetting to add the 1 at the end. And then we just need to tidy all this up. So we're going to add these two bits together and we get 2x squared plus 9. And that's our expression there for gfx. Right, okay, here's some for you to have a go at. Okay, so two questions. Have a go at both of these and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so the first one says gfx, so it's important the order you do these, because these are the same two functions in both of them, but it's important we get it the right way around. So this means, what is g when we put f in? So for the first one, we need to put our brackets around the f function and sub it into g. So we have three lots of x squared minus 3, and then plus 2 at the end. And expanding all that out, we get 3x squared minus 9 plus 2. And tidying that up for the last step, 3x squared minus 9, add 2 is minus 7, so 3x squared minus 7. On to the other one, we have fgx, so what is f when we put g in? So this time brackets around the g, and subbing that in, so it's x squared, so we've got 3x plus 2 squared, and then minus 3 at the end. And expanding that as a double bracket there, we're going to get 9x squared, plus 6x plus 6x, which gives us plus 12x. 2 times 2 will give us 4, and then minus 3 at the end. And again, just tidy that up. You can write the full double bracket out, but we get 9x squared plus 12x plus 4 minus 3 is plus 1. And there's our expression there for fgx. Now, before we finish, I've got one more for you to have a look at. Okay, and the last question here, f of x equals 2x plus 3 and g of x equals 3x minus 1. Given that h of x, which is just another function that's not given to us, is the same as or equal to g of x, write down an expression for the inverse function of h. So obviously there is a bit of inverse functions in this as well. So 
you will have to have a, have a good knowledge of inverse functions here, which I will link in the description on the video on that. But have a go at this question, see what you get. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong, I'm gonna go over the answers in a sec, but pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answer. Okay, so it says given that h of x equals g f x. So first things first, let's find out what g f x is. And that's the function of g when we put f in. So brackets around the f, and let's sub that in. So we get three lots of, obviously just putting it into the x here, we get three lots of 2x plus three, take away one. And if we expand that out, we get 6x plus nine, but then take away one, let's write it out in two steps, plus nine minus one, which is 6x plus eight. And that is the function of h. So h of x equals 6x plus eight. Now it wants us to find the inverse function of h. Okay, so let's just work that out. And to find the inverse function, we're gonna write it as y equals, so y equals 6x plus eight. And let's make x the subject. So y minus eight equals 6x. Then divide by six, so y minus eight over six equals x. And then let's swap around the x and y's. So x minus eight divided by six equals this inverse function of h. There we go. So something that looks a little bit more complicated there, but that is our inverse function, x minus eight over six. Okay, so that is the end of composite functions. Again, if you found that useful, if you found it helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.